uh, I have found myself. Now, I, I have been professionally pious for over 50 years. <laughs> that is, you know, I was a seminarian, I was a priest, I've been a monk. And, and at least theoretically in pursuit of, of, the spirit, of spirituality and the search for God. And I, I have to say that in that period, I have not found a tool, another tool as helpful as the Enneagram. Uh, the Enneagram is not a religion. It is not religious. It can be used as effectively by Jews, by Muslims, uh, by, by Catholics, by Protestants, by Hindus. Uh, the beauty of it is that it expresses profound truths about human nature and so is compatible with any philosophy or religion that also expresses profound truths about human nature. And so, and I've only known the Enneagram about 15 or maybe 17 years. I learned it first in Israel when I was uh, stationed there at our monastery at Emmaus. But uh, now, the, the spiritual background of it that's very important, this is going to sound like you're, you, there are enough gray heads here. I know I can speak of Baltimore number three and be understood. People will know what I'm saying. Just as I could say if I wanted to, Holy Ghost. And everybody would know what I'm talking about. Or at least most of you would. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to give you some catechism background, really. It's that fundamental uh, uh, about our faith and our selves as human beings. And, and, uh, and spend the time showing you how the Enneagram fits hand in glove with our Catholic teaching, our basic Christian uh, theology, Catholic and Protestant teaching. Now, we know from the Bible, from Genesis chapter 1, that man, excuse the expression, but obviously we mean men and women, that man was created in God's image. And we're told, in his image and likeness, God made him. And then in the other second account uh, in Genesis, we're told God made man and woman in his image and likeness. He created them. So we are in the image and likeness of God. Now, we have qualities of God that we share. And I, I think, you know, uh, we can pass this off as though it were okay theory, but didn't really have any practical meaning in our lives. I want to tell you, and I hope to be able to tell you this tonight and tomorrow, it surely does. It has deep, meaningful, powerful, important repercussions in your daily life that you are in the image and likeness of God. Now, uh, theologians have argued for centuries about, well, precisely how do we image God? And they would look and some of them would say, well, we have a soul and that's spiritual and God is spiritual. And then others would say, well, yeah, we have freedom and God is free and, and so that's the way we image God and, and on and on and on. And it, they were all wrong. I'm going to tell you the right answer. <laughs> the world has been waiting for me to come along. Uh, and it's obvious in a, in a way if you look at the qualities we attribute to God, you know, we say God is total perfection. Uh, God is all-powerful. God is constant, infinite creativity, innovation. God is compassion. God is truth. God is love. Now, if we are in the image and likeness of God, we also have all of those things. But you, I see somebody in the back row shrugging her shoulders. But, yeah, but where did they go? <laughs> they didn't go anywhere. You have them. What happened to them, though? You say, well, they're not that obvious. I'll grant you that. I'll tell you what happened to them. And again, we have to get to the Baltimore number two for this. What happened? Original sin. The image and likeness in which man, woman, was created was was distorted, was tarnished, uh, was wounded. The, the theologians use a Latin term. They say that as a result of original sin, we are uh, vulneratus, which means wounded, in naturalibus, 
we are wounded in our natural way of acting. And so that the image and likeness of God that we bear was tarnished, was sullied, but was never destroyed. The devil could not do that, uh, nor can the world or the flesh. So uh, we share these things. Now, uh, however, the mystical uh, authors teach us that we are given, each one of us is given one of God's qualities in a unique and special way. Emphasizes one of them. We reflect one aspect of God more than the others. And, and, and what that is, is we're going to look for this, this weekend.